quick test drive here. What? Let's see, oh, look what I found. There's a little flathead here. Okay, and I give you high speed mode. <laughs> Both of our fans run in. Really livens it up, which is fun. Um, I never even go full throttle, totally fine. And First thing I did is remove some of the electronics. That's the ESC receiver combo. We're just going to cut that out and then you'll take out the servo as well. It's pretty straightforward servo. There's just a couple bolts on the back end. Retain the servo out because look, there's four or five pins on that. Um, so it's not going to connect to the new receiver we're putting in. Putting in the ESC, something like that. Receiver right next to it they fit beautifully i have soldered on these connectors quick overview of the electronics we have a receiver and your radio your radio here is going to send a signal to the receiver receiver is kind of like the brain of your rc car it hooks to all the components you have esc which is hooked to your motor um electronic speed control how fast it goes and then your servo and then we're going to add other stuff as well here is the FPV setup again. All the links will be in the description. I chose to run a analog setup with a Runcam Phoenix mounted on top of a servo to pan it back and forth. That'll send your video to the video transmitter, the VTX, which sends it out through the antenna and your goggles will receive them or screen. Um, you can get a screen for as low as 40 bucks, so no biggie there. Um, <clears throat> and then your video system is all gonna connect into the balance lead, or that's how I set it up at least, which I think works great. Uh, the flight controller and GPS is well hooked on there. I'll show you the wiring later. This is our main battery lead, which is going to power the car and your servo and your ESC, and then the balance lead here. I hooked up three fans as well, one to cool the VTX, one for the motor, and one for the flight controller, because those are all things that can heat up quite easily. Looking at the receiver, we're going to use four channels, and then the last two that aren't really channels, they'll just hook to fans, so when you turn it on, it also turns the fans on. But yeah, each channel corresponds to stick movements on your remote. Here's a diagram of the radio master pocket and which channel goes to which stick. This is where I hooked everything up together. Here I wanted to show how simple you could set up FPV. It's just not gonna have an on-screen display, but for an RC car, you don't really need it. If you do want an on-screen display, you're gonna have to add a flight controller because that adds it in. Connect your camera, VTX, and you could do a GPS then, which is pretty cool. Deeper than it looks. Follow this 4x4 trail up and over that hill. And we're off for our first real off road test. Gonna show you the analog screen here. On the top left, we have a timer. Underneath that is the temperature of the flight controller. We have our channel power. That power's wrong, so don't listen to it. The satellite is underneath it. We've got eight satellites. Bottom left, kilometers per hour. Then we have our battery voltage, and then longitude and latitude so we can see where we are. I'm running the VTX at full power, so it's actually at 1,000 milliwatts, so that 400 is incorrect. Um, I'm gonna show you the GoPro video as we go up here, just so you get a better um, view. Yeah, look at that, you can see so much more. But going up this hill was super fun, um, and it's, look, I just skipped closer to the top, it is doing really good over these big rocks super capable not stuttering at all yet but yeah pretty big rocks pretty steep and here comes our first challenge and yeah looks like we're spinning out back up get a little speed oh yeah i made it over that little divot 
Um, and if you look on the analog display, look how steep that looks. Like, it's pretty cool. It's like you're actually in a 4x4 going up a hill. Keep our momentum up. We're struggling a bit here. And all this low RPM stuff, not sure what it'll do to the motor. I am running a 3S. This thing is only meant for 2S. So we'll see. I'm so close to the top here. This is gonna be great. Looks like I'm spinning out, I think. And oh no, um, that looked like smoke. I'm not sure, I'm still moving though. What could be smoking? Still smoking? Maybe my battery's dead. I think it cuts out pretty quick. Yeah, no, I think that's smoke. I think it might be on fire. Uh, shoot. Well, so it turns out that 3S on a motor that's only rated for 2S only gets you so far and that when the motor starts working real hard, it'll overheat. So lesson learned, maybe I'll make it back. Uh, no, we stopped. And walk a shame. Definitely smelling burnt motor at this point. Yeah, I don't think motor coils are supposed to be black. Don't worry, folks. We got a Tamiya Tamiya Torque Tuned 550 motor to replace that little 380 motor. So this thing's gonna be sick. Check out that size difference. So obviously it didn't fit, but look at this bad boy. I hooked up a wooden rig here. <laughs> Man, if this works, y'all owe me a like and a sub subscribe because come on, that's amazing. Beautiful day at the park here. Perfect for a long range test. Gonna zoom in and show you how far we can go. It's, it's not too bad actually. There are some trees, so it'll be a great test. I'm gonna try to make it all the way down there and back. And we're off on our second adventure. I've only removed a couple fundamental parts to get that larger motor in there, but totally worth it. And dude, look, we are totally flying. I love how fast the GoPro makes 15 miles an hour go. And look, now we're doing 20, even in this long grass. I want you to look up at the analog video on the upper right. And just want to say, it is pretty disorienting. It's very doable um, driving around, but it is disorienting. I also want to point out how nice it is having the GPS on here. GPSs are so cool. And then the on-screen display showing me my speed in real time is so freaking cool. Um, it would be really cool if it showed how far away you are in meters. But on Betaflight, I couldn't get that set up. Um, because you have to arm for it to set a home point and there's no way for me to arm this car um, because the flight controller is not actually hooked up to any components so that's what led me to do the longitude and latitude i'll simply hook up the coordinates into an online distance calculator and show you how far we've gone so this is inconvenient and annoying but not the end of the world i did that here to see that we're 230 meters out which is awesome and here I got a little lost looking around. I'm kind of almost going backwards for a second. Um, and then I turn around and find my way. But going back to GPSs, it is so cool that the GPS can sense satellites miles and thousands of miles up in the sky and it triangulates or like makes a grid to figure out its exact position, uh, which is the longitude and latitude. Super insane. And I just sped up this part where I kind of got lost. We went through the trees. Um, and then we get into an opening and keep going until we get close to this bigger tree. There's some long grass here and some obstacles. And I even had to back up through this one. Just really happy I didn't get stuck, but pretty impressed with its rovering abilities. It's eating up this grass like it's nothing. It's that to Mia High Torque Motor, baby. After passing this big tree, I really started getting all the 
telemetry loss warnings, but I pushed on and it surprisingly let me keep going. My video quality does end up getting quite a bit worse here. Um, this is the end of the field and that little dot is the trash can marking that. So let's see if I can get to it. Afterwards, I decided to explore. This kid is like juking me out here. I don't know if he's trying to grab it or what. Let's skirt around. Weird. Oh, <laughs> I think he uh, tripped trying to catch me. Well, let's go. Unintentional waterproofing test there. The fan in the RC car noise was too loud to hear what anyone was saying, which made me a little sad. Got some waves here. I was kind of paranoid that people would try to grab it or whatever, but everyone was pretty respectful. Just skirted around them too. Got a little squirrely here. Hard to decide if I want to be on the sidewalk. Let's do the sidewalk. Don't shoot, bikers. I almost hit them. I know. Next time, man. <laughs> yeah, I got lucky, huh? <laughs> luckily, luckily the analog video isn't very good, so <laughs> the GoPro would have got a sweet shot, though. So the two main types of off-road RC cars you have are your bashers, which are meant to jump and just do crazy stunts with. They can go off-road, it's fun. And then your rock crawlers, which are more slow and controlled, um, which can are more capable because they have locked differentials. Now this is what they call a rock bouncer. It's basically a mix between a basher and a rock crawler. So it's a jack of all trades, not very good at anything to be honest. It has a locked rear axle and then independent front suspension. And right here is a perfect example of why it's called a rock bouncer. It is a ton of fun and it can kind of do everything. Now the real question is, can you FPV off-road with this thing? Because that's really what it's meant for. And I'm here to tell you, it is pretty difficult, but you can. And that challenge kind of brings a whole new level to RC cars there are pros and cons one cool thing with rc cars is you can see them from the outside you can see the dirt spinning out of the tires um you just get a better perspective on where you are so it's easier to maneuver you don't get that with an fpv car obviously it feels like you're in the car which makes it fun in a different way it's novel Here's that last slow-mo shot, but in first-person view, super awesome. I was really impressed with how the FPV system held up. Nothing broke. I rolled it so many different times. After about 30 minutes of bashing this thing, that's the noise I was hearing, so that'll conclude things.